Welcome, everybody. Welcome. All right, everyone, let's kick off the meeting today. Everybody say hi. We've got Brent on the line. Hey, Brent. Hey, guys. All right, so before we get too far into this, please, please, please tell me something good. What happened good last week? Any new leads, any new closings, any new opportunities? What happened? Uh, I got my first listing not too long ago. Congratulations, man. Um, a pocket listing, it's a small duplex in Sacramento by Landfark. Um, so if anyone has any buyers, might be investors or someone looking to live in one unit and rent out the other. Awesome. Um, find me afterward and I'll go into the details. Uh, 475. And how did you find this deal? Like for, for uh, originally, I was looking for a client of mine looking for a duplex. So I was mm -hmm. calling people in that area. And so just calling duplex owners. Awesome. There you go. Just calling around. All right. Who else has something Hi. good to share? Manu? Um, I got an offer on the house that's been sitting on the market for like three weeks. Yay! It was literally a mountain to move. The house has a mountain as a backyard. <laughs> so it was like I've been praying for the mountain to be moved and finally we got an offer. So praise God. <laughs> Wonderful. Did you do anything like a price reduction, an open house? How did you get the offer? Uh, we, didn't, we did $20,000 price re reduction within 10 days because we got a lot of um, comments on the, the car and the uh, paint mm -hmm. and we were thinking about another price reduction but I wanted to wait on a few things because there were people still interested coming over got it so then I took so many trips to the city Rockland city office uh, with the planning department I'm like I want something in writing that we can put an ADU in there Oh. And the planning department was like, we can't do that. I'm like, I'm sure you can do something. So I was like in her office back and forth on the phone call every other day. Uh, she finally gave me something that she said I did a 40 pages of uh, document research on this property and area. I don't see anything that would stop an ADU. So I pitched that to the people and finally we have them. Well, there you go. Okay, come on. One more. Who's online, feel free to share. Feel free to share online. Christy, you don't have to be a, a secret agent, Terry or Missy. If you're available, please hop on. Well, but tell, tell me something good. One more, tell me. Drew, go ahead. Hi, Gla, I got some good news, and Brent wants to hear this one too. We have a listing that uh, a big and important uh, investor of ours, uh, he was looking for an offer, um, and kind of put some pressure on us and we we're able to get an offer $20,000 above less than 24 hours on the market. So uh, definitely, you know, what I can tell you guys too is what I saw different in this, this deal. Um, you know, this is out in like South Sac. It's not in the greatest area. They put some money into it, but the big thing for us was staging. You know, it was, the staging was amazing. Thanks to thanks to John giving us Boom. Bob's information. Yeah, um, he came in, did a great job, did it super fast. Brent's showing you guys the pictures right now, All right? And I mean, it just looks amazing, and I mean, it looks sold, and it got exactly what he wanted within less than twenty four hours. Wow. Beautiful, that's so a win. Good job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Bob Krolox yeah. show. Yeah, Bob show. did a great yeah. job. Thank you so much for that. Right. If you want his, if you want his info, we got cards in the back. We can give you. He's spoken. He's been a guest before. Um, we probably need to have him back. It's been a while. So it um it really makes a difference, you guys. Uh, the comp said that home was worth four hundred. We put it out at four twenty nine nine in South Sac, and we got four fifty. Because we put twenty five hundred dollars worth of staging, we get almost a ten x return. You're insane if you're not staging your stuff, people. Uh, you know, it's like prom night, baby. You dress it up <laughs> in that dress, pretty. Woo, put the corsage on right there. Woo, even I look good on prom night. Hey, Brent, we got some new people in in the. Uh in the office here today. If you're new, if this is your first team meeting, would you mind just raising your hand saying uh, who you are, where you came from, which stories real quick, 30 seconds. Okay, hey, my name is Crystal Ray. I'm Barry's new admin assistant from the team that be in here, so I'll be assisting you. Um, I'm in the process of getting my real estate license. 
I have a background in retail management and MLM for the last nine years. I've been running my own multi multi level marketing business. So I'm really excited about the opportunity here. Awesome. Welcome, Crystal. Awesome. Three people right here who are new. Me? Yes, yeah, please. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, hi, my name is Amber. I just joined EXP, um, so I'm glad about that um, for California. I'm also a real estate agent in Nevada as well, so uh -huh. I'm switching over that. I'm with Berkshire Hathaway over there, but that's I'm in the process of um, coming over with uh, EXP as well. Welcome, there. Amber. Thank you. <laughs> who's, your, who's your neighbor? Tracy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm Tracy. Um, we've been working as a partner for two years. We came from Pacific Bay Estates, which is out of Sassoon City. Um, and then we just were looking for a better opportunity. So we found awesome. Yeah. Well, glad to have you. Thank you so much for showing Thank up today. You. And then here, Tammy. Tammy. Would you mind just introducing yourself to the group? Sure. And... Yeah, I'm Tammy Coronado, and I recently moved up here from uh, Fort Worth, California. And I had a, a work with a small brokerage out there. So was, I'm new to EXP with all the data and all that stuff going on, but I love it though. Um, so I've been up here in Roseville, living up here for about a year. Welcome. And that was at the beginning of when it started all the multiple offers, 5K over asking price. So buying my house, doing all that, I totally feel for my clients. So yeah. I've been there done that. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah, you picked a great time to come over here. It's yeah, popping. Yeah, exactly. Awesome. One more. One more. Oh, I'm Corinne. sorry, I didn't see you. You're hiding there. What is I'm it? Corinne. Corinne. Corinne, beautiful name. I just got licensed, so I'm just here to check it all out. Thanks for having me. Hey, thanks for coming. <laughs> who, who invited you? Susan. All right. There you go. Thank you, Susan. <laughs> so, real quick, I know Rodney's in the room. I think, is Alicia still sick? Uh, she's doing much better with Michelle Rodney Tuesday, but I'm not sure where she's on. Okay. Well, um, Ronnie, you mind giving us a, a lender update? What's happening in the wonderful world of mortgages? The wonderful world of mortgages, our rates are still on fire. They're still down low. They're, there's a good chance they're still sliding down, although the jobs reports came in, uh, bet, like less unemployment. So that puts pressure that the economy is doing better. Like rates might actually be heading up a little bit, but I don't see anything major swing one way or the other. It's just going to be a little bounce, you know, here and there, you know, so just pay attention to that. But there's tons of loan programs. From down payment assistance, FHA, VA, you know, VA leading the pack with you know rates of two and a quarter. Uh, yeah, fixed, right? I know it's insane. Um, you know, so twos and threes are available for investor or owner occupied uh, or you know investment. Uh, down payment assistance is abundant. Jumbo, it's a great market. You know, use I, I push using it and uh, is the temporary buy down on the interest rate scenarios, which go for FHA and conventional, as opposed to doing the price reduction. You know, with the price points that we are, and I know that was brought up, uh, uh, you know, by somebody that maybe there, you know, you could get into concessions by doing that, but with the price points that we're in right now, with a ten to $15,000 price reduction, you could do less than that and save your clients. And I'm not joking, $800 a month on their payment. So when you show them the payment versus a price reduction and you give them the choice, and I'm putting together some marketing now for that. I think it's a no-brainer, right? It'll pull, they still have to qualify it, whatever the market rate is, because this is a temporary buy-down, but they could have $800 a month. That $800 a month, I call it a life changer because they could pull them off the fence. I don't want to buy until I pay off this credit card. I don't want to buy until I pay my car off. I don't want to buy because after I buy, I put all my money in, I have nothing to change the carpet, paint the house, landscape, whatever, right? So they can take that $800 a month if they're disciplined, apply to that at the end of the time. You know, they paid off bills, their household budget goes down from where they could start today. Mm -hmm. So it's a great opportunity to take advantage of that. Awesome. Any questions for Rodney? Well, can I ask, so I thought this was cool with what you just said. I saw this the other day and Egypt was using it as, um, you know how a lot of buyers just say right now, well, the market's going to crash, the market's going to crash. <laughs> I so, saw that same app, yeah. Did you? Yeah. I thought it was cool though. So yeah. if they buy now, obviously 350 is probably not going to happen in our area, so whatever, but you could get updated numbers from Rodney or Alicia or whatever. If they buy now at 350000 an interest rate of 2.5%, their monthly payment is 1382 If the market crashes and it goes down to a $300,000 house for the same house, but the interest rate has gone up to even 4.5%, which is still pretty low, but that changes their monthly payment to fifteen twenty. So that actually their payment goes up, goes up for $50,000 less. So like you want to make sure that if you have a client that's starting to like get together with Rodney where he can run numbers and 
tell you, well, this is what the payment will be now, this is what the payment will be. If the market crashes, that means interest rates are going to go up. And this is, you know, because most people are payment driven, not as long as they can afford the payment. Exactly. So I'm putting together a presentation for you as a buyer's agent on how you would implement this and one for you as a seller's agent on how you would implement it because both sides kind of have different perspectives and the seller is like, why would I do this? But you can see there's a difference and literally they could do that. It's a marketing budget you would apply and they could save money rather than reducing the price. And the whole thing is you guys control the market. You set the tone. Everyone's worried about the bubble. We're not having a bubble locally because of all the fires and just the over, you know, demand for the limited supply. So don't let that fear even enter the marketplace. Spend their money if they want to reduce the price on financing and sell that payment mm -hmm. because it will make a difference. That's mm -hmm. my opinion. So awesome. getmoneyforyou.com is my website. If you want something simple. Is it really? Yeah. That's it's legit. <laughs> you can sell that and make a bundle. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Wait, more like we're all spelled out just normally. Okay. Yeah. Awesome. All right. Well, hey, we got a couple of mega events coming up. Where's, where's Frank? Oh, there he is. Yeah. All right. So we got a couple of events coming up. One of them is Frank's golf course or golf um, tournament. You mind sharing us a little bit about what that no, is? Not at all. Uh, this is my eighth year. Uh, I've done this and it started um eight years ago and it's my foundation and uh, i'm a pretty tough guy i can take a lot of stuff but when i see the commercials with little babies in the hospital rooms with needles and masks man it just gets me every time so i wanted to combine what i love which is golf and helping kids and i do a benefit golf tournament every year for the sacramento shriners hospital okay um, John is uh, graciously going to be a whole sponsor. Uh, Steve Evans is going to be singing the national anthem a cappella right mm -hmm. before. And I just got word that uh, the humble hustler Cindy and her crew are going to be coming and volunteering. So I've already notified the Sacramento Fire Department in case any fires start going from those girls. Okay. <laughs> it is September 27th. Uh, if you have a flyer, that'd be good to put up. Yeah, we'll put um, a flyer on Brent. Goes. September 27th at Ranch of Marietta. If you don't golf, just come on out for lunch. Just it's a good cause. I'm telling you, my tournament is a party. You know, it, it doesn't matter if you're a good or a bad golfer. It's just it is a party. That's what I want. And it's going to be some great people out there. It's like this room. I come here for the last three weeks now because I love the environment. I love the motivation. I love to see the new people coming in and um, even the old veterans like myself. I get pumped up. I get pumped to see rent. I come here for motivation. So I'm asking you to get motivated about helping my cause. And if you have any questions, reach out to me after the meeting. You can get a hold of me on Facebook or whatever, but um, it's for the Shriners. Brent played in it last year. He had a ball and he's not going to be able to because he's traveling all the time, but I'd love to have some great EXP representation out there. Frank, for the people online, like what's the best way to reach out to you if they have questions or want to donate? 916-756-6042. And believe me, um, I'm going to have so much food out on the course by the time you get to the luncheon, um, it's, you're going to be full. I played in the golf tournament on Monday and it started at 11. I didn't get home until 8.30. That's no point. I don't mind that. Okay? So my tournament starts at 9 and you're home by... 3 30 4 o'clock and that's the way it should be done but nice. if, if you want to come out and volunteer if you want to not have you know just have some lunch if you want to come out and see john and steve and the humble hustlers and her group and it, it's going to be a great time so i appreciate everybody's support hey frank can i um i want to give a shout out if i could um every year he's done it i was traveling it's our anniversary in september we're always going somewhere fun for our anniversary but that last year i could make it unlike this year we're traveling again but um i was shocked i go to golf tournaments all the time i was like oh my god frank this is a big deal there was like lots of people, lots of vendors, lots of whole sponsors and food. And it is a major, you know, one of our sayings is EXP making real estate fun again. So are you making real estate fun again? In other words, 
take a break, grab a girlfriend, a guy friend, whatever, and go golfing and just hit the ball. And if you break a window, <laughs> drive fast in the direction. I don't know, <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, obviously older stuff, but it is so much fun. I had the best time. That was the most fun I've ever had a golf tournament, but I was shocked at how big it was, how well run it was. So if you like free stuff and food and a good time, Frank's tournament, I was just, I was floored. So props to you, Frank. And of course, it's a great cause raising money for a great charity. So good job, Frank. I just want to throw that out there. If you can make it go. Can you repeat the phone number, please? Awesome. All right. And so then that's that's the event that's happening the 27th of September. But more immediately is let me share my screen. We've all who we all know the RPA is changing, right? Or most of us do, right? Yeah. Changes are taking place. And so what the Sacramento Association of Realtors has done is they have partnered with CAR and are putting on like this is like this is super hard to get into. Like they, there was a minimum of 100 people that we had to have at our association. They've now upped it because we cleared the, the minimum, but it's so expensive. It's 62 bucks. So what Brent has kindly offered to do is buy a number of these tickets, and what we're going to do next Thursday is have a viewing party. So that we can come in here. It's from nine to one, so it's a long time, but. We do this, Valerie, we, we do this every year, right? Whether, whether there's an update or not, you need to stay current on what, what the RPA is saying, what it means. It really helps us get deals accepted. It'll make you more money and it protects you. So that's nine to one. So tomorrow, next week's team meeting will be at, start at nine o'clock and go to one. And we're just gonna broadcast this. We cannot do it via Zoom. For those of you who like to chime in via Zoom, we can't do it. We can't do a Zoom on a Zoom. So you have to be here in person. If you're not able to make it, you can you can buy the class the course right here it will not be recorded it's live only okay it is it is pricey it's 63 bucks so but who 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 plans on attending next week as, as a show of hands nine o'clock bright and early we might have some coffee might have some donuts okay cool all right we'll see you guys next week so that's all we have for upcoming events moving on to our special guest for today somebody that i have known a very long time in fact, I just met him last yesterday afternoon via the phone. <laughs> and uh, it's it's Bill jo Jocelyn, Bill Jocelyn. So how many times have you come across, because we sell houses all the time. People are always asking, well, can you sell this? Can you sell this? Can you, can you sell a brewery? Can you sell um, a golf course, a laundromat, a small, some form of small business? And I'm always like, shoot, I have no idea. I just sell houses and even barely. Valerie helps me sell houses, you know? And so... <laughs> There's so many opportunities that I've come across, and I'm sure you have as well, where it's like, how can I, how can I help that individual sell their business? And that's exactly what Bill does. So real quick, Bill, you mind explain this to what your business is? Yeah, thank you for having me here. You want to stand up here so, okay. we can, so we can get you? Everybody give Bill a round of applause. Thank you for coming out. Let me have this uh, spotlight here. Uh, thank you for Rob and Sandy. They, they've donated to my causes. The, we have an athletic homeschool league that Rob's always saying, how can I help, can I help, help? can I help? And he's donated on a couple of events. So thank you, I want to say that publicly to you. Um, so my name is Bill Jocelyn. I work for Common Ground Business Brokerage. We've been in business for about 12 years. And uh, the definition of a business brokerage, people go, what? Business brokerage, what, what do you, what do you sell commercial? No, the definition is really how I put it is, the PL at the end of the year of a business, the profit and loss, I sell that profit. Okay. If, if anybody asks you that, that's what I do. I sell the profit at the end of the year. Um, we're a general brokerage. We don't specialize in anything. I sell lawyer offices, uh, firms. Uh, I have four HVAC companies. I specialize right around 750000 to 2 million. We go up to 20 million. I have a $20 million listing. It was a little harder to sell, obviously. But past that, if it's SEC, then uh, investment bankers and lawyers get involved. And we, we don't go there, but we do uh, asset sales and, and uh, share shareholders. Um, uh, we have footprint in all of the states. We're, we're up and down California, but I have one in Mexico. I will watch business in Mexico. And I have a, uh, uh, glass making company in New York, uh, make glasses. Um, so, so we're not tied up here. We can't do business in some states, but for the most part, uh, we're out there. Um, referral fees. This is the exciting part. 
we give out 10% of our commission. So if I have a million dollar listing, um, uh, once we get paid, yours is the first check out, 10% goes to you, you get $10,000. We have paid up, up to $50,000 to somebody before. It hurt, but, <laughs> but we pay it out. <laughs> okay, so just for handing somebody a card, you can't be involved in it or we can't pay you. So you just hand somebody the card, I sell the business, you sell the commercial or, or residential. So just to be clear, like they're not, there's no liability on us in this instance. We're not filling no. contracts. We're, not, we're just saying, no. hey, this talk to Bill. All we, we, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a very tight business. We have to have everything squared away before, you know, all our I's dotted and T's crossed. Um, and so um, we do cap our commissions. We're the only brokerage out there that caps our commissions at 250,000. We feel that, you know, we just, we just don't want to take any more. It's the same if I sell a $60,000 business or a $20 million business. It's the same process. It's actually easier to sell a $20 million business because those guys are so, they know what they're doing. <laughs> so um, so we do cap our commission. So that's why it's up to 50,000 in your commission if you were to hand over that. Um, we do have integrity. Um, we'll take any business of yours. And if it's $60,000, $20,000, we do have a minimum of 20,000 minimum, but if you ask us, we will take on that client. Um, we will treat them with kid, kid gloves because first of all, we're supposed to be humanitarian. We, I wanna serve the person first, referrals will come after that. So any, any client you have that you just want them to talk to us, or if you wanna use me as a referral, just give me a call. Um, I'm going to pass these out. I think you can just take a picture and it'll go right on your phone. Oh, yeah, just scan the QR code. Yeah. And then, so you said $20,000. Is that $20,000 a month minimum? No, no, per, per business. Okay. Yeah, per business. And uh, that's, uh, so I have a yoga company that I'm selling there, $70,000. Mm -hmm. um, we said, okay, we will uh, do $12,000. We'll sell it for $12,000. Okay. Okay. Got it. So, but we're mainly at around 20, 20,000. Okay. So, so, um, and, uh, if you want to scan that, I think you just take a picture of it and it'll go right on your phone. I do have cards here too. Yeah. Let me see. There's a card. And I'll pass those around. Yeah. So if you're interested, take one, pass it around. Don't and I people think on the outside. On, I think you guys scan that. I think you can get it. So if that's okay. Yeah, we'll 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 take a picture of your business card and put it on the on the Brent Gove team page. Okay. Yeah. Is there any questions? You yeah, guys what have? questions do you have for Bill? Can you give us a scenario like the yoga studio? How did that work? Like how somebody brought said, "Hey, I have a yoga studio to sell," and then um, I believe that one was just called in on our website, but we take. Uh, on every business, we take three years of their tax returns. We have all the insurance. We do, we go through, we charge them $650. It's not a profit margin for us, the 650 to do analysis of about 30 pages. Um, but it, it does, uh, we don't obligate them, uh, but they do get a nice 30 page paper of what their business is like if they want an exit strategy. So if you call, hand me somebody, do fill out our referral form because sometimes people are looking to sell in three years. And we mm. want to make sure you get that, that money in three years. So you partnered them. So I think I heard a little bit of the story. So was there a jam or something involved in this? Okay. Anyway. So how do you, do you sell the business part, but not the building? Right. Okay. We, we hire out the building. Okay. We're, we're not specialists in residential or commercial. Okay. We just sell that little profit margin at the end. And a lot of people don't know we do this. And I'd never heard of this before. Yeah. So it's it's another stream of income. I lost a lot of clients like that because people wanted to sell like pizza store. And I'm like, I don't know how to deal with it because you don't own the right. building. You right. own the business and I don't know how to sell that. And so when we do have realtors great. trying to represent the other side and we, we really don't do it because they they typically don't know what you know what's involved and we're gonna we have to take the whole deal. So we double end every deal. Um, just so you know, so and, and then also a bigger reason too is that like for EXP, EXP being other is business sales. Mm -hmm. Actually, that's not true. Well, you commercial can do is EXP yeah. Realty. No, EXP Commercial can do it. EXP Realty. Yeah. 
for all of us that use a realty, you guys cannot sell businesses for our ENO through the realty side. It's or do property team. manage. Yeah, or do that. So it's one of those, and a lot of people, a lot of agents don't even realize first that there are businesses to sell. Second of all, then they think that they can just do it and not realizing that they're a- acting outside of their ENO insurance, which is a big deal because business um, brokering is highly litigated. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of lawsuits that come through it. So you hand it to the people that know what they're doing that have the proper insurance to get covered. Yeah. So one of the areas that come, one of the areas that comes up a lot in is when you're selling care homes. Yep. Because they usually have a business tied to it and you need to get some help on that side. Do you do care homes? We do everything. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. So if it's um like mini mart, do you take care of it? Is the inventory part of your business? It is, but that's sold off separately. Okay. So I take what's at the like I said at profit mm-hmm. and then inventory separately. But you handle that essentially. Oh yeah, we handle it. We hold their hands. Yeah. So yes, same with the restaurants. Like last year, we ha- I had someone reach out to me to sell an Indian restaurant. Mm-hmm. Um, Those so you harder. handle all the stoves and like all the equipment they have. Yeah, we handle everything. We walk it through and uh, make sure all the contracts are in place because s- people typically only sell their business one time, and so they don't know how to do it. They have to be kept. That's where we come. In. Typically, you can uh, you can sell a business, but how protected are your clients on both ends? Mm-hmm. And so that's why we like to handle both sides because if we get somebody that doesn't know what to do on the other side, we end up handling, handling both sides anyways. So um, we do co-broker occasionally, but we try not to. Um, if uh, and also if a business is that profit is about two hundred thousand, it typically sells for four hundred thousand. Typically, two times of what it makes. So that's the advantage. I like to stay right around, like I said, around 700 to 2 million. That's my sweet spot. Got it. All right, any other questions for Bill? So I just wanted to say, um, you sell the business, but if it's on land that's owned or the building is owned, you don't do that portion of it? No. So if you were to sell a place, right, you would sell the real estate under EXP. Yeah, which- And they would sell the for us the business. Yeah, which I do know that EXP, as long as it has real land, you can do, you can't do the commercial side, but you can do, you can. Um, unless you go through the commercial classes and all that, but you can do it as long as it's residential land or whatever. Yeah. You can do that, a residential house, residential farm, or, you know. Yeah, and you can still do, even, I uh, won't say that because you're commercial, you can still do commercial one, okay? The only thing that you just can't touch is the business. Yeah, you, you just have, you have, they have to own the property, as long as they have to own the property. That's, yeah. you can, Interesting stuff. Right? I did not know this existed. Who knew this existed prior to today? All right, we got a handful of people. The smart people raised their hands. For the rest of us, we didn't know. We didn't know. So thank you so much, Bill, for yeah. coming by. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to talk to you as an expert if you need to. Me and my partner have been here since 2003. Uh, we bought about, between 2010 and 2013, we bought about 10,000 homes up and down California in foreclosures only. Um, and we're still doing that. I haven't done it lately, but as soon as this market turns, we'll probably head back in that direction. Okay. Um, but to be fair, my partner, he bought about 25 a day where I bought about one or two up here. So. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry? Did you do flips or did you buy a uh, we, we bought them at trustee sales. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's, um, he, he's in Southern Cal um, up here. He was out there, but he's still doing it in Nevada right now. Well, he was until the moratorium. And then, uh, so, if you have any questions on foreclosures, be a resource as well. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you so Thank much, you. Bill. I appreciate everybody. Thank you. All right. So, yeah, Bill, hang on to the end if you have more questions for him. But now, let's talk about open houses. Um, we've covered this in the past, there's a lot of great resources. If you go to brentgove.com, you go to real estate training. There's um, everything he has, the open house application, the signs, everything's right here. Um, Brent, I don't know if you're still on or if you're on a call, but let's just hear from everybody who's doing open houses. What's working for you? What's not working? How, how are you handling the clients when they come in? And then we'll take notes. So Cindy, you are an open house 
master. By the way, open houses aren't for everybody. And this is what I want to say, moving into it. We talk a lot about open houses. They're not for everybody, right? So for me personally, I'm a massive introvert. Valerie's an introvert. If you get us at an open house, we'll be like, hi. <laughs> you can walk around, sign in place if you want to, right? And that's it, okay? But if you get somebody like Valerie and Cindy, they're going to leave and Cindy's going to be their best friend, right? And so what you want to do is you want to partner with somebody, another real estate agent or another lender who's going to, who's going to compliment your strengths. If you're that bubbly person that, that just talks all the time and doesn't listen, you might want to have a listener there, okay? So just, just... Just, just keep that in mind. They're not, they're not for, and for safety reasons, right? It's a safety thing too. Um, you know, I mean, I'm, nobody's gonna attack like, you know, and but you, get, you get what I'm saying. So just, and there's scary stories. People, people squatting in houses when you go through. Okay, so this, let's start with this. Safety first. Okay, when you walk through the house, always make sure all the lights are on. Check the closets. Check everything. And make sure that nobody else is in there that's not supposed to be in there. That the animals are locked up the way the animals were supposed to be put away, okay? Those are some tips that Valerie and I, and we always walk in, hello, 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 right? Let them know if they wanna get out, let them get out, right? You're not there to stop them, okay? What are some other safety tips from people who are doing open houses? Cindy? Uh, for my listing, I noticed that my screen was pried, so I could tell someone was trying to get in my house um, and they couldn't get in, but when I, then I didn't go in the house and I walked around and tried prying all the screens off and trying to kick in all the doors. So oh, gosh. I did not go in. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> so just do a safety check. If something seems off, don't go in, right? Mm -hmm. Your gut's telling you something, listen to it. Don't, don't muscle through. Oh, no. Um, so I always try to, and it's a complex thing, but I always try to make sure I know where my exit points are and have a secondary exit strategy and that kind of weird stuff. Yes. And if for some reason I have a weird feeling from someone, I totally carry my keys around with hand where you like most of the time. I know I'm so sorry. It's the husband thing. I'm sorry. No, no, this is this is the, the reason why you do that is because of what's happened to other people. And um I try to always keep my cell phone like right on me so that if something were to happen, like I can call I hopefully something. You know? Yep, cell phone um, on you and uh Valerie keeps she hates it, but I make her carry a pepper spray. Yeah, yeah. 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 Pepper spray. Like, they pepper spray. <laughs> Real to spray. Super <laughs> teal and super cute. Yeah, they come. They come pretty. Yeah. Yeah. And they sell it at B Car. Like yeah. 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 That's a mean one. I had just one quiet moment at an open house the other day. This guy came. He was high, so I just stayed out front. And I grab my phone because I don't go into the house. If people are, I let them look. I don't walk people around because I want to be always by the front door. Right? Mm -hmm. I want to be by so I just stayed out front with him and nicely saw him out, you know, just, um, and I was, of course, watching for people who were walking by. Luckily, it was a busy street. But also, Rob made me a sign that I set out that just says, basically, here's the security system in place. Ooh. And it has a little light on it, and nobody knows that I don't really have like an expensive security system. My security system is on my phone; it's available, and I'm, you know, I have things that I would do. But mm -hmm. um, I think, interestingly enough, people ask about that all the time, so they notice it, and I think it does put a check on people. You, you have a security, a security. So they're like what does that sign mean and i said yeah i just have a security system in place and i don't go into detail in general people who like stuff like that ask about it but it shows that people are noticing yeah i just put it together it's a board that has a revolving red light and says the security measures are in place for the safety of our team okay you put it back up on the uh, team page sure you posted a while back but just don't sue us if it doesn't work <laughs> Disclaimer. <laughs> my friend. All right. So now that we got safety out of the way, like let's what are some questions you have about? Because I know this was a, somebody asked us to cover this specifically. What are your what's your number one bottleneck? Is it finding the open house? Is it what to say when they arrive? Is it converting them after they leave the open house? Like what's what's some converting questions? Converting them after they converting leave. after. Okay. So uh, we'll do converting. Yeah. So how do those of you who rock open houses, how do you like to convert them after? Show them a house that night. Okay, show, show them. Me. Yes, your mission is to get them into a house, lock that open house up, and find a house and get them, show them houses immediately. That is that is the silver bullet. That's been our experience as well. And we need to do that by going back to, which we all forgot about the vacant house list. 
You should every time I'm passing that out at every open house. So it's vacant, they're probably not, and make sure they're not having an open house. So you could tell them, drive by and then come back and talk to me and I can get you in this after my open house. Um, but you want to make sure they're vacant and not having open houses or that next realtor is going to steal them. Yes, yeah, so just, to, just to make sure everybody, does everybody understand what Cindy's saying? Like have a list with you so that way they can go check, do a drive by of these other houses in the neighborhood. And then once you're done with your house, if you don't have support, you can go show them that house the same day. Um, so we, pre-COVID, you know, you printed off the list, right? You did that. So what I switched to is doing it digital, which means all I do is it's like take a picture on my phone list, but then I say, oh, well, we have a digital list. That way, you know, you don't have any more chance on paper. Yeah. And that's how you get their cell phone number because then they want you to text it to them. And I do the whole, obviously mm -hmm. I learned from Reddit too. So I do the whole, I'm the only one this list. You can't get it online, you can't get it here. And I totally sold houses because they had a vacant list. And I do that, you know, Here's my business card. Here's like your passport. You can go be a peeping tom, and nobody's gonna bug you if they do. Tell them your crazy broker saying it, and that works really well for me too. And everybody loves the digital thing right now, but literally, it's a picture of it. Like I screenshot it because I email it to myself, screenshot it, chop it, make it look nice, and that's my digital um, vacant house list. Mm -hmm. So you always want to have some, a reason to follow up with them, even if it's just like, hey. Um, Hey, Cindy, thank you so much for coming to the open house. It was great seeing you, right? Look forward to the opportunity to help me find something. There's some great properties that want to, you know, there's some great properties I'd love to show you when it's a good time to see it, right? So you can follow up with that. Um, at your house, Cindy, in Land Park that we held, there was a list of all the upgrades the house had had, right? Which is great if, they, if the realtor is walking in there on a scheduled showing and showing the house goes, oh, look, because they always ask, what are the upgrades? Well, here they are. Well, we took that down when we were at the open house. And we said, hey, if you'd like a list of all the upgrades, it's a really long list. What we can do is we can text it to you, right? And so have, have something that you, again, a reason to follow up. Um, yeah. So any other suggestions on how you convert? Yeah. Also, just make sure that, like, once you start um, your open house, do your best to make sure that you're in a good, positive, upbeat state of mind. Right? Yeah. Like, if, if someone comes in and your open house, you've been there for two hours, like, hey, <laughs> like, like no one's gonna want to buy a house from you. Like be the little bubbly self that you need to be in real estate, and uh, you know, talk to them, try and find out, try and build that rapport, right? The you know, the successful real estate agents aren't necessarily the ones that know the most. It's the the ability to develop rapport quickly, yep. right? Get you something where you guys resonate together, and then. Ask for you know, you know, ask for their numbers, right? Like you get the digits, like you got to go for it uh, and connect with them, um, and then like Johnny said, you got to follow up. Yeah, follow up and put them on search alerts in KB Core. If you have another system, all the systems that integrate with the MLS do that, and then it can be based off of the house that they signed in at, right? So it's very easy just to send them search alerts, right? They'll follow up until they die. One other thing on that is just finding out what people need because that's yes. where you bring value to them. So I was helping a new agent at an open house um, about a month ago. And this person literally said, I'm not giving you my phone number or my email. And so I was like, okay, no big deal. Don't have to have it. Okay, moving on. And all of a sudden, so then I just kept chatting with them. Well, pretty soon they were talking, they're buying a rental, a home as an investment. So I said, hey, are you going to be managing that yourself or are you, do you need somebody to help you with that? They're from the Bay Area. Well, that was their need. They wanted somebody to help them manage it. So all of a sudden I had their phone number, their email, I'm sending them to rent pros. So that was the ticket after literally one minute before that they had said, nope, no, I don't want to give you any information. So that's part, just the conversation. And that was our way in it, right? Mm -hmm. Aaron, they had a genuine need we had an answer. Mm -hmm. And so then she was able to begin working with that person. So I just think it's, a, you know, so much of it is just conversation with people. I mean, it what's is. going on. And if you, you struggle know? with that small talk, you got to bring somebody in. I like spinning that too, when you, when you, like what she said, when you start, because I keep these little dots, like where it things down. For one place, but I always do, and of course, Brent probably does too, but the off market deals. I'm like, well, what is your need? What are you looking for? What if I could find you something off market because you'd be interested in yeah. knowing about it? Um, and that's another great way to get it because how are you going to tell them if they don't? And if they really do have an agent that they're very, I'm like, no problem, give me your agent's number because it's still that if you find a need where they can't find it, 
that gives you an excuse to call homeowners too. And even if it's you're calling that homeowner, maybe you still get the listing and because you have a buyer that's already approved, right? And, but if they're super, super duper committed to their agent, it's like, well, no problem, give me your agent's name number. It's still an excuse then to call homeowners that that right here. Mm -hmm. People right. need to watch that though. Brent, Brent's training is by far. Oh, yeah. I think that is, if you don't know all the lingo that everybody's using, put your 35 signs out, do um, the work. So, for those of you, when it's know. 110 degrees out, you still put the signs out, you show up, you are positive, you're ready to go, and it works. It oh, really does work. work. I'm telling you, I'm adding on <laughs> so, that too. I did it myself. I was the first time. <laughs> you're saying i always put at minimum 25 signs out right 35 would be better if we can get up to 50. i have people i was talking to tom from there uh, I, I gave him a bunch of signs but uh, i was talking to him like you i get it every single open house that i do i have at least three people that will come in and be like I just wanted to meet the guy that had all the uh, And I always joke with them, like, yeah, I didn't get enough attention as a kid. So really <laughs> you know? And they laugh, and it's the icebreaker, and we get into a report. All right. If, I, if, if you can make someone laugh, you immediately start that and just follow down, or, you know, follow it with just building more and more. And I would suggest. You know, unless you have a seriously good relationship with these people, like that's your aunt or something, I wouldn't necessarily be saying, hey, go to a bunch of open houses by yourself, right? Like if your clients, now no one in this room, okay, but if other people send their clients to my open house, there's a good chance they might work with me. So, you know. I did what Brent taught us though, is go over and above, like, right? Be passionate mm -hmm. about it, go over and yeah. above, put the extra signs out, show up, print the extra list, take, take the time to be prepared mm -hmm. and show up, be there and be present because people are out there looking for houses. And when you do all that and you show up and you're on time and you're, and you're feeling good, like you've done all these extra steps, that you're, you're auditioning for the neighborhood. Right, so your likelihood of getting neighbors to come in, oh, can you list my house, increases. And you just feel better about yourself. And that, that is projected off the people that walk into that yes. house. Um, and also just about signs, you guys know the loss of the signs. <laughs> Literally, the police have come to my open house in yes. Rockland and shut my open house down, took all my signs, had to, and if you buy them back from the police department, they are $10 more than you buy them from rent, just to let you know, so you will never buy them back. Um, and they are very strict. Like, do not be putting them in center mediums. Do not be putting them in people's houses without permission. You guys need to know the rules of the towns. Just don't go litter signs everywhere, please. And I see some of you doing it because there's yellow signs out there. I know it's someone from these teams. Oh, yeah, that's great, that's doing it wrong. You know, the great thing about that with that, too, is that it gives you an excuse to door knock on a bunch of yep. people's houses. Yep. Like, hey, one of your neighbors, uh, or selling one of your neighbor's houses, and they're really just needing your help. Is it okay if I just put a sign or two in your yard, just directional signs? Yep. And they're like, oh, yeah, sure. Who's selling? Right? Here comes a conversation. Well, so definitely don't show up with 10 minutes before your open house yes. to do your signs. Right. Mm -hmm. Especially right around night. You'll be sweaty, you'll be mad, you'll be pissed, and you'll be like, yeah. <laughs> 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 right? Okay. Oh, yeah. 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 I actually have a question if yeah. anybody knows. So, because I don't feel houses too much, but um, what if you're selling a house and you're like, hey, I I've got more people through my buyer video, which is holding open houses and stuff. And they're like, why did it say appointment only? Are we still supposed to have the COVID appointment only sign or can we do regular open house signs? No, and is it for both regular. counties you can? So you are so you could do, you're not required to do anything right now currently was with the old county and Sac County, you don't have to wear a mask. But even though we've all noticed our team, we are literally the only people not wearing masks. Everybody that's coming in is, so we had just asked them if they'd like us to put one on. But we don't have to do the COVID open house signs. We don't have to do the COVID sign in sheet. We don't have to do anything. Thank God. Okay, cool. yeah, I did ask. That's what I was asking too, is people did come in with masks last Saturday. And I was like, do you mind if I, should I put a mask on or do you mind if I, don't the mask have a mask. I mean, a lot of them are like, no, 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 no problem. Yeah, we definitely noticed no one in Placer County is coming in with masks, but a oh, hundred percent of the yeah. people coming in in Sac are. Yeah. Uh, yeah. All right, real quick, we talked about signs, 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 what not to do. 
I'd like to, because I get this question all the time, where the heck do you put all these signs? How do you get all these signs out? Like, how do you affix them in the hard ground? Like, what are you, what are you doing? So can we get some from the room, what you do to put all these signs out in a way that's- I just want to say this because this is why I got busted. <laughs> in Rockland, you guys, in parts of Roseville, if you could stand on a corner and see another one of your signs, you're breaking the law of the signage of the town. What? So, so you cannot put them on your corners and yeah, and they have the rights to take them. So if you read the rules in Rockland, if you could stand somewhere and see another sign, then they're too close. Oh, so I don't buy by it. Anyone else besides sign. Rockland? Yeah. Get every Rose corner. Rose part of it too, though. And I have, well, you know what? I'm going to spend the eight bucks for I, 10 bucks. I put 30 list. signs in Rockland on my listing. And I was like, yes, you had on medium, I saw you. <laughs> and I was like, if the cops take it, take it, That's you know, right. because I'm going to get three. Passage. I got three leads out of cops can have my son. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. The reason for the center medium, it comes undone and hits a car, you're getting sued. Okay. That's what it's about. I was going to say, too. I use bungee ropes, so that's no. You can buy it. Yeah, yeah. I use bungee ropes. There's no way they're flying. I don't care if it goes in the ground or not. That kind of junk freaks me out. Yeah. I bungee mm -hmm. everything. So I know if my side's got something. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Thunder Valley. Don't even go near it. They'll take all the Thunder Valley. Well, even if it's on the street, they will go and take all your signs. They're nice and they'll call you and you don't have to pay to get them back. But they will remove any and all signs that are anywhere near Thunder Valley, even though it's on a public street. Thunder Valley, there's yeah. only a dump out there. What? Yeah. Hey. <laughs> there's a dump near it. Residential houses here. We're where was the house? Where was the house? Was it your listing? Maybe 50 million years ago? Remember that one we had out? <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, oh my gosh. Okay, time out, you guys. Time out. You guys are telling horror stories about open houses. <laughs> <That's good. laughs> my neighbor mowed hey, his lawn and got electrocuted. I'm against mowing the lawn. Brent, can I say something? Water. Brent, can I add something? Water. Okay, to, to soften the ground. Oh, oh. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you have the, the stakes, okay? There's a lot of times. Where mine got so disfigured, and yeah. I gave those all the time. Yeah, the black yeah, yeah, you did. Uh, you Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for thank you for all those bent signs, Drew. Those were awesome. Stage. Hey, Tom, go oh, ahead. Tom, want to say something? What's up? So, Drew, thank you for all those bent signs. I really appreciate them. I had to work really. That was my Love workout for the day, straightening them all out. But to, uh, to Drew's point, he's absolutely right. I was not, I, I do things differently in LA. We always put the labels, the address labels on the signs. Some of you don't do that. It's an extra step. Uh, the beauty of it though, is that they only need to see one of my signs and now they have the address. So uh, they can GPS it there. But to Drew's point, who got this from pro tip from Brent, uh, just the number of signs, you know, he's right. People come in and say, okay, who's the lunatic? who put 50 signs out. Uh, I took his advice. I did, a, 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 I did, I, I was a lunatic a lot over this last several months. I did two open houses in one day on both Saturday and Sunday, one in Roseville in the morning and one in Rockland in the afternoon. And I'm, I had a crap ton of signs, 25 to 30 per open house. And I had to move them. Uh, and it was a lot of work, but I had people come as a result of it. So uh, I'm Cindy, that's really amazing because I've never had anybody take my signs. In fact, I've forgotten them because I had so many signs. Drew even said, hey, there's this open house sign bungee to the pole next to the freeway uh, for your open house. I'm, oh, yeah, I had to go get it. But I've never had anybody take my signs. Uh, the city I know they do in Gold River uh, because they only allow three signs in Gold River. You have to yeah. get them from Gold River and they're a hundred bucks each. So you have to yeah. give them a check for 300 bucks to get their open house. Like, it's a pain in the butt, but uh, it's worth doing. I mean, if it, whether you put the address label on the sign or not, I do it. It's an extra step. If you want to, uh, I think it's a good idea, but the volume of signs makes a difference. People will go, wow. Like they'll see it, see it, see it, see it, see it. And if you hear Brent's story about, you know, the fruit, you know, along the side of the road and why, what inspired him to do it, it really does make sense. It's space repetition. So you got to do that. Hey guys, um, but you, city, I, signs yeah. you can hire somebody for that. This is the best area of leverage. If you don't want to put a sign out because you want to be pretty when you get there, instead of hot and sweaty, hire somebody. Put well, I lose, I lose, I lose two to three pounds every Sunday way running around like a madman, uh, sweating. Like a dog, so I just bring an extra shirt. Yeah. Sorry, Bram. What was that? Sorry. What was that? One more time. Are you talking to me? 
Yeah, yeah, I couldn't hear you. We were laughing too. Well, just one thing, one safety thing, though, I do believe, please don't walk with your back to traffic. If you are putting signs out, please always face the oncoming traffic. Um, Please, please do not turn your back. I would love to five minutes and wrap up with a few thoughts today when you're done. I don't want to interrupt the flow of the open house. I love it. Last last thing that I'll say is we've heard bungee cords, a good place to get them is Harbor Freight, my favorite place to hold. Dollar Tree has them. Dollar Tree has them. I like ones at Harbor Freight. There's, there's adjustable ones. They're, they used to be black, I don't know if they still are, but, but then that way you can wrap them around um, a sign, you can wrap them around a telephone pole, you can wrap them around a tree, right? So Harbor Freight, they're super cheap, you can get 15 of them. But those are those are the secret sauce we're going to put out the other thing, signs without as Brent, people off. As Brent taught us when he was setting us up, is remember what the sign is there for is for the cars that are coming your way, right? So you need to put yourself in the driver's seat of the car, a hundred yards down the road, and figure out where you're wanting to turn from a hundred yards down the road. So, so remember that view. And sometimes that will mean you'll put it on the opposite side of the pole that you thought you were going to put it on because you're you're getting that turn lane. Yep. And uh, and so just bear that in mind. Act like you're a driver. Honey, you want to go to that open house sign? They need that much time. You want to go to this open house? They need that much time to make that turn at 60 miles an hour. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. One last um, tip or whatever. But um, a few years ago, uh, Margaret Criswell had a listing that was, uh, what was that one last? Like 1.2 million. And I had never hold, held open a 1.2 million dollar house. Now, granted, it was a country property, so I could wear my brand from the cowboy boots. So I was right at home. Uh, so in case you're wondering this, if you have a certain price point you want to work, the weirdest thing happens. If you hold an open house in that price point, guess what you get? Buyers in that price point. Yeah. What did I get from the 1.25? I got so much business off that one open house. It was ridiculous. So don't be, if you have a certain price point, if you're wanting to only sell like 600,000 or above, don't hold, hold an open house in a 400,000 dollar house because guess what you're going to get? 400,000 dollar client. I mean, you might happen to get a neighbor that wants to upgrade, but like, don't be afraid, like stick with the price point in the area where you want to work. 100%. Yep. 100%. So Graham, what you got? So, you know, pull up Newcastle, uh, Granite Bay, Loomis, Penryn, Folsom, El Dorado Hills, all the high dollar areas. And then call any broker, Lions, Coldwell Bank, Remax, Berkshire Hathaway, EXP, Independence. I love the Independence. So usually you'll see them. They're from San Francisco or far away. And ask them, can I hold this open for you? Also, when you run out of property, sometimes you won't see them pull up the pendings and look for the vacant pendings. And I go, hey, can I hold this open for backup offers? And so I'm out there holding pending sales. You can do it if they're vacant. If they're occupied, it's a little weird. But if they're vacant, you go, hey, if your deal falls out, how would you, I'm going to have more offers for you. And they, so I've had people say, yeah, go ahead. You can hold my, my vacant. Say the truth, it is kind of uh, sketchy right now. Yeah, hold it open. So, you know, I, I don't think people are always hungry enough. And I, I want to wrap up with this. I, this year, I've paid Tony Robbins $550,000, over half a million dollars for coaching this year since um, March. And that's a lot of money to pay. How many of you would pay attention if you paid that kind of money? Let me see some hands. How many of you would pay attention if you paid half a million dollars? So I have my Tony Robbins here. Uh, uh, where is it? My... Uh, where is it? Why isn't it showing up? That's weird. It's the reflection. My Tony Robbins Your journal, platinum partnership, leather like diary where I write down all my all my nuggets and stuff. And he told me, he goes, you must control your focus. If you focus on what a horrible guy your husband is, what a lousy woman your wife is, you're going to have a horrible marriage and probably get divorced. If you're going to focus on how there's not enough good men left to find and get married to or not enough good women left, you're going to have a, a bad situation. There are lots of buyers. There are lots of sellers. You got to take control of what you focus on and go, okay, am I going to take Buyers and sellers, or am I going to only take buyers? Am I going to only take sellers? Am I going to focus on, on investors, two, three, four, five hundred thousand, 500,000? Or am I going to focus on the million dollar range and go get a bunch of million dollar clients and they refer me to their million dollar friends? And you could you could make a decision. Um, uh, Sotheby's is owned by Nick Sadek. I went to high school with Nick Sadek. He was the king of antelope and inserted him in the Granite Bay, focused on everything Granite Bay, changed his focus. And today he's the number one luxury guy. He owns the Sotheby's in Granite Bay. And it was a decision in his pain. It was the decision in the crash of 
oh seven, oh eight, oh nine, oh ten, oh eleven. Is is he is he was the king of antelope, and the homes went down to eighty eight thousand, a hundred thousand. He'd still go sell 50, 60, 70 of them, but at eighty eight to one hundred twenty thousand, he was devastated financially. He literally rented a nine hundred square foot cinder block home in Granite Bay, sucked it up, went to every school thing, went to every country club social, went to every birthday thing, every, and he's hey, I'm Nick, I'm Nick, and he started boom, 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 boom. And now he's who he is. So what Tony Robbins took me, he was, you must take control of what you focus on. If you're focused on your lack of money, energy goes to where focus flows. And so he told me about the achievers curse, which we're all achievers, right? He says, if you focus on what you don't have, you'll never be happy. So you, you got to focus on what you do have. Be grateful for the kids you have, the husband you have, the wife you have. The friends, maybe you're not married, the friends you have, people that love you. Tom, I was at the Dallas Cowboy Club. I know he's a huge Dallas Cowboy fan. I bought this for you. I was thinking of you playing golf. It's just a silly little money clip. Um, but I was thinking of you, man. I, and I bought this. I go, you know, Tom loves the Dallas Cowboys. And so is that the Cowboy Club? I got this for you because I'm your friend and I love you. And, and we all need people that love us. And it's not that this, you know, it's, it's a you know, $12 you. item. That's not the point. It's the point that I was thinking of them. And I look at you guys, man. I get emotional looking at you guys. Steve Evans, Drew, Barry, I mean, Cindy. And, and, and there's a bunch of new people who are like, oh, he's weird. He got emotional. On his but anyways, I, I get emotional. You have people who love you and care about you so you can go feel sorry for yourself. We could all do it. I feel sorry for myself until I met a man I had because I had no shoes. Until I met a man who had no feet. I get it. You, you're barefoot. You have no shoes. And that's kind of a cruddy thing not to have shoes. But there are people who have no arms and no limbs. There are people who have no eyes. I am grateful to be able to see you beautiful souls. You beautiful people. And so we got to come from gratefulness. So again, um, if you focus on what you don't have, you'll never be happy. Be grateful for what you have. Gratefulness. You got to start reminding yourself. Stay grateful. We're attracted to people who are grateful for the air they breathe. They're grateful. Are we attracted to negative, bitchy, whiny, this sucks, that sucks? We're not attracted to those people. And so if you want to develop that magnetic personality, you walk in the room and you lift the room. You become a room lifter. You're conscious of every room you walk into. You don't walk in and go, I'm here. That's not it. But you <laughs> and, and you and you walk in and you see the, the 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 guests and you go introduce yourself. Well, I didn't bring them. They can sell 10 homes. I won't make any money. I didn't get any stock. I won't earn any rev share. <laughs> that is not what you want to be doing. Does that make sense? And so you love. And so uh, just a few more notes. He said, if you, you could, here's a, here's a trick question. Do you focus on the past, the present or the future? And I tend to be focused on goals and dreams and vision and the future. He says the future is good and there'll be some degree of joy in the anticipation of the future. There's a degree, but really true peace and joy becomes when you, when you focus on the present and you're grateful for what you do have today, not what you don't have, but you're grateful when you could be grateful for like right here, right now. Think, well, as soon as I sponsor 30 people, as soon as I get 20 listings, as soon as I pay off my credit cards, then I'll be happy. You'll never be happy. All money does is magnify who you really are. Amen. Trust me. It just, it won't change a thing. If you're miserable now, you'll be a miserable rich guy. You'll be a miserable yeah. rich girl you know what i mean a woman i'm sorry woman you'll be a, rich, a miserable man a miserable woman so you really got to take control of this and, and 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 work on those things so he's talked about as i wrap this up is this okay as i wrap up a few things kind of saying he talked about hunger and energy he said, remember, and I thought about when I first got in real estate 25 years ago, man, I was so hungry for it. And I put out the energy and I was out there and I finally cracked the code. He, he says, you are um, one, I wrote this as further ahead, you are one idea away from radically changing your business forever, but you have to absolutely master and rock that idea. And my idea, when, you know, 1999, when I figured out open houses, 
I went all in. I remember being so excited. They said, you can't do open houses at HUD homes because that's all we had to sell back then. 500 moves you in. There were boarded up homes all over Sacramento in the 90s. And, and you can't do it. So I would put it easy up in the gutter, in the street. I'd park my car, easy up in front of the car, card table, chairs, put out my stuff. And agents will pull up and go, you can't do this. You can't put your signs here. Sound familiar? Nothing's changed, right? Um, <laughs> and, um, and tell me, you can't do this. You can't hold a, a HUD home open. I go, go check the front door. It's locked, baby. I'm, I'm not holding an open house. Well, you've got these signs. I go, read them. Do any of them say open house? It says HUD house with an arrow. I'm simply pointing it out. The door is locked. Please call HUD, report me, do what you got to do. But I am not holding an open home. That, that I'm holding a locked home. And then if they want to go in the locked home as a licensed agent, I could go and lock the HUD home, get the key and show them the house. And then I'd lock it back up because I could show HUD homes. It just wasn't an open home. I held locked homes from the gutter because I was hungry and freaking desperate. And so I, and I had that energy and I put the energy to where I was going. And all of a sudden I'm selling so many homes. I made almost $400,000. And then I hired Scott Okaboom. I hired Steve Hillier and I hired my first like three agents that first year back in 1999. And also I did went from, you know, 50, 60 homes to 118 to 170. Steve, Steve Evans came along. I remember he was an insurance agent. Steve's back there. And I was begging him to quit his job and get rid of the insurance agency and get real estate. Remember that, Steve? I do. I do. <laughs> and and so, yeah. But remember your first love. It's hunger. It's energy. It's what you focus on. Focus on the good in people. I get it. There's bad people. But focus on, be, be positive to a fault, you know? And so I just want to wrap this up today. Your, your hunger and energy. And Tony says this, I'm still trying to understand it. He says, business is a spiritual game. I, I don't even know if I understand it. He keeps saying it. Some of his coaches say, well, what does that mean? Business is a spiritual game. I've been hearing it more and more and more. And I'm, I don't know, I'm praying over you guys. I'm praying over my clients. I don't know if you guys do that. Pray over your kids. But he, and the last thing I'll say is this, your energy determines your relationships. So what kind of energy do you bring to your relationships? You get home tired, I'm being tired, don't talk to me, you know, or, you know, what kind of energy are you bringing your family, the very last leftovers, or you know what, I'm beat, I'm tired, but I go, okay. Take it off. I got to be dad, man. My kids need me. I got to be mom. I got to be a wife. I got to be a husband. My wife needs me not to be tired and grouchy. I'm going to give her my freaking best. I'm going to love my wife and I'm going to, I'm going to forgive her because I want to be forgiven. You know, I'm not going to hold a grudge against her. I'm, I make dumb mistakes all the time. I'm like king dumb mistake. If I were to have a title and I'm proud of it. I, I, I just do it, do it, do it, do it, do it. And, and all of a sudden you get good at stuff. And so that's my message for you today is what kind of energy are you bringing to your client relationships? What kind of energy are you bringing to your seven-year-old or your 17-year-old, to your husband or your wife? I want you to think about that as we go today. What kind of energy are you putting out there? And you, you attract like, I meet a bunch of horrible people. <laughs> everybody's flipping me off <laughs> maybe you're like swerving at them and doing this i'm like hey how are you my, my kids are, you know them i go i don't know them, but they're nice people because i expect i bring energy to it i love and i realize you meet some zeros you meet some lemons you know shake it off i'm not naive to that but i love you guys thanks for letting me have the last few minutes of today's team meeting i know i'm holding you over so hopefully you get something out of it from Puerto Rico, I love you guys. Awesome. Well, hey, on that note, see you all next week, nine o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning. Thank Here. you, Brad. See you then. Thank you. Love you guys.